Hi guys, just reacting to a, a very interesting news story here. Not really a translation one, it's more of a linguistics one. Uh, article in The Guardian, the title is Origins of Trans-Eurasian Languages Traced to Neolithic Millet Farmers. Research finds language family that includes modern Japanese, Korean and Turkish spread largely due to agriculture. And, uh, of course it did. Um, thing about these these new studies that are coming out is that they are that they were already complicated things but now you've got DNA fragments they're doing linguistic kind of reconstructions going backwards in time fragments of texts working out oh this word um, one of the interesting things that I've read about is we know quite well how the uh, Indo-European language families evolved you can see how German changed over time because it was written for quite a long time and you can kind of say, well, let's assume every language evolves at roughly that speed. You know, so the three new letters come in every 20 years or the letter S gets replaced every 50 years or something. And you can kind of work backwards and say, well, 400 years ago, they probably had this, this, this and that. Um, so the, the article talks about that there are 98 trans-Eurasian languages, including Korean, Japanese, a bunch of Turkic languages, uh, Mongolian and Tunganistic languages in Manchuria and Siberia. So I think, you know, it's the, the long belt. I wonder if that includes Finnish. I didn't actually see the word Finnish in this article. Um, I'm sure there are people in Finland who speak uh, languages in this language family. Um, the theory is basically that one language spread from somewhere in I think this is the north of China, was it Liaoning? Northeastern China. Um, about 9,000 years ago. So that would fit in with my understanding um, of Chinese. The origin of modern Chinese languages arose independently, also with millet involved. Uh, while the progenitors... Oh man, I love that word. I, I should use that word more. While the progenitors of the Trans-Eurasian languages grew brune coral millets in the Liao Valley, the originators of the Sino-Tibetan language family farmed foxtail millet, didn't know there was any difference, at roughly the same time in China's Yellow River region. I talked a little bit about the Sushan culture, um, which is indeed in that Yellow, yellow, um, yellow, riv yellow River region. So whether the these progenitors of the Trans-Eurasian languages had any encounters at all with the progenitors of the Sino-Tibetan language family, um, or whether they, you know, they literally never ever ever came into contact. I find that hard to believe. I imagine they must have been aware uh, that you know there's a bunch of people 400 miles down there. You don't want to go near them. So yeah, really interesting article. Lots of um, it's more of a history thing than a linguistics thing. Um, talks a lot about the origin of these Neolithic millet farmers in the Liao, Villier, Liao River Valley, which includes Liaoning and Jining and the region of Inner Mongolia. And as they moved across Asia over the years, the languages spread west into Siberia and then up to the east into Korea. So they kind of started northwest China and went and on a map like that. All right, very interesting stuff. Have a read. Um, I'll put a link in the article below. Bye.